Geraldine Ferraro, the first woman to receive her party's nomination to run for vice president, is dead at 75. Her battle with blood cancer lasted a long, nasty 12 years. Our battle with character assassination, a fight she also took on, unfortunately, is still with us. Today, when every display of hate is scoffed off or dismissed as the work of supposedly independent Tea Partiers, it's worth remembering that every bit of dirt that could be dislodged from the earth was hurled at the country's first female candidate for vice president. And it wasn't just spontaneous sexism or New Yorker hate. It was the Republican Party's chosen tactic. It's barely recalled now in media accounts, but in 1984, pickets followed Ferraro's campaign around and drowned her speeches out with heckling. They called her names, and because she was pro-choice, they cast her as a baby killer. Ferraro, vice president for death, was one of the kinder slogans. The scene at a Ferraro election stop looked like what women had seen for years outside abortion clinics. It wasn't unlike what Florida vote counters would find outside their offices years later in Palm Beach during the 2000 recount. And the GOP said then what they say now, namely that the thugs have nothing to do with them. In 1984, the media found out different. Journalists turned up an audio tape of a training session in which the pickets were coached to say, I'm a concerned citizen instead of the truth, which was, I'm with students for Reagan. The troublemakers were tied conclusively to the Reagan-Bush campaign, but the nation's first party-promoted public stoning, it was effective. Ferraro fell, and stoning rose. It's with us still. Just ask Elizabeth Warren. Enjoy Grit TV? Want more people to see it? Well, we are making our show available free to public television stations. We need your help to express your opinion. If you'd like to see the show where you live on public television, call your local station and ask for Grit TV with Laura Flanders.